it's personal, right? You, if you want to change someone's safety culture, you have to make safety personal for them. Mm-hmm. And how much more personal can you be than protecting your head with a, an upgraded piece of equipment? After you get over the hurdle of this is different than what I've worn my entire working uh, career, people tend to realize pretty quickly that they're very comfortable to wear um, and they like them. Hello from the Labor's Health and Safety Fund of North America. My name is Ryan Pepperello, and I'm the Safety and Health Specialist for the fund. Welcome back to our safety vodcast series, and thank you for joining us. Today, we're discussing safety helmets, the future of head protection in construction. Safety helmets are taking the construction industry by storm. Bigger contractors are buying into the switch to keep workers on their job sites safe. Hard hats design have not changed in 40 plus years with a hard brim shell attached to a suspended adjustable headband. The safety helmets being used today by contractors resemble helmets used in cycling, climbing, and many other sports. Safety helmet manufacturers include MSA, Cask, and Petzl. Most manufacturers provide the same helmets and attachments, although they have different costs to consumers. I'm joined today by Steve Stewart. Steve, please give a, a, a brief a background and um, you know a little bit about your experience, please. Hey, good afternoon, Ryan. Thank you for having me aboard uh, to discuss this really important topic. Uh, my name is Steve Stewart. I'm the Corporate Safety Director for Pullman. Uh, Pullman is a large uh, international, especially concrete construction company that services its markets from the East Coast to the West Coast and up through Canada. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in a safety role since uh, the late 90s. I started out in refining uh, here in the Northeast uh, as an operational uh, component and then moved into safety shortly after that, after we had a pretty significant fire and we needed some additional resources to, to help with that. Um, so my other background associated with safety, I've been a uh, firefighter, a volunteer firefighter, and also an industrial firefighter for quite some time, 25 plus years at this point as a volunteer, and still am active today. Great. Great. Well, uh, we're excited to have you, and, uh, you know, thank you for, uh, you know, being out and, and fighting fires, man. I, <laughs> I would, uh, you know, I give you guys a lot of credit being out on the front line, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so let's let's dive right in. Um, let's just discuss your experience with uh, ordinary safety hard hats. Um, you've you've worn a, a vast majority of them, and um, what's the transition of getting into these safety helmets? So our company, it, and actually, it's a really good point. So I've been wearing helmets, you know, since the mid '90s uh, as a as an employee in the refining world. Uh, and then as I moved into construction, we've always wore hard hats. Um, you know, it's just part of the gear. You wear it, you protect your head, and you, and you don't even think about it. It's just something that's issued to you when you come on, and you kind of go from there. Fortunately, I've had a chance to wear a bunch of different helmets, uh, from hard hats and in, in normal work activities, uh, firefighting-type style helmets, uh, and then also with the specialty teams that I've worked with, um, in, in the fire service and emergency services, we've wore um, these specialty helmets that we're getting ready to talk about in high angle rescue and confined space entry rescue, uh, and then also in our dive operations. Right. So, I mean, it's it, very different uses for each, and uh, but they all they all have the same aspect of protecting uh, your head. I mean, and, and that's where a lot of people, a lot of workers out in the field, um, they don't want to wear them or they're, they're not comfortable enough. And that's where I think the safety helmets, you know, we'll have a discussion of where they come in. Um, so, so your company, Pullman, um, you know, what was the uh, direct, I mean, what made you guys introduce these safety helmets? So unfortunately, um, one of our sister companies had, was involved in a pretty bad uh, incident where some people sustained traumatic brain injury. Uh, and that really got the attention of leadership across the board to say, what can we do to protect our employees better than the standard hard hats that are available to the industry? Okay. And I mean, how long did that transition take for you guys to, to make that, make that change? 
it, it's been a long transition um, from its inception. And the reason for that is there was a lot of, there, there's construction helmets are not really uh, accepted in the industry. So to move, I mean, you're basically changing a fundamental thought or a fundamental piece of equipment that's been around, like you said, it, I think it's 60 plus years at this point that the hard hat really hasn't changed much. So when you're gonna bring something new to the market, to your, to your workplace, it takes a lot of energy and you wanna make sure you do it right. You don't wanna just come in and, and not have it thought out of a well thought plan on picking the right piece of equipment uh, vetting it out to make sure that it's uh, it's going to meet the needs or exceed the needs. Um, and then also there's a huge cost factor associated with these helmets as well. So it, it took a few years. Uh, we went live with the construction helmets back in uh, early 2020. Okay. Okay. So you're new to the game. Um, but a lot, I think a lot of contractors are. Um, you know, driving down D.C., you pass a couple sites um, and you see them on the bigger sites. Uh, the bigger contractors, I mm-hmm. uh, think they're buying into them, but it's more of the smaller contractors that maybe they're having management buyback or, you know, not the buy-in. Um, is that something that you guys experienced um, with management buy-in or was it more of the field workers that were having that gap? Uh, fortunately for us, it, our leadership, our executive leadership uh, was totally invested in making this change, not only to protect the employees, but to change the uh, construction market as a whole. Uh, They felt that um, we need to make the workplace safer and to do that is to have these conversations and and make the change not only internally, but along the same lines as our peers and and owners and clients that we deal with. Um, So we're very fortunate that it was bought in from leadership. And as we continue to uh, move forward with this initiative, uh, our employees have bought in just as much. Good. And, and, and building off of that, are, are you got, are you uh, in the safety department, are you seeing changes uh, out in the field? Yeah, we, uh, we rolled them out back in, like I said, I think it was uh, about February timeframe when we rolled it out to all of our branches across the United States. Um, it was a, it was a initiative that we sent out to everyone There was no um, pushback. Uh, There was a lot of questions of what to do and how to use them and and are they as safe as hard hats and they do look a little bit different. But having a good rollout strategy and also having uh, buy-in from our leadership team and our our management teams across the board really made the the initiative go well. Good. And, And that's where I think the big culture change um, happen and, and, or is happening, you know, the big culture change of, you have to wear something to protect your head. And now we're changing, Correct. <laughs> we're changing it, uh, to, to, you have to wear it every day. And, and that's, uh, it's a comfort level. And I think it's also a, um, you know, a lot of pushback can, can come from it. So I'm, I'm glad you guys may have seen pushback, but not, not much. So, um, I know you have a helmet on on hand. Uh, would you like to go? I do. With us? Sure. So I, I actually brought, you know, and I know it's going to be a little tough to see it. So these were the helmets. This is the uh, fiber metal uh, hard hat that we were wearing uh, in the field for quite some time. You know, our company color blue. Uh, it's not a cheap helmet. It's not the it's not the most expensive helmet on the market, uh, and it did the job really really well. Had the you know the Uh, Ratchet suspension, had the four-point suspension in top. Um, Our guys seem to like them. They're very lightweight. Uh, But this particular design really hasn't changed much in quite some time. Um, And then we moved to, uh, after a lot of investigation, trial, error, and things of that nature, we moved into the 3M uh, 5000 Secure Fit helmet. Uh, This helmet was selected for a lot of reasons. Um, and I don't know if you want to get into every single one of them right now, or if you want to just see the helmet no, for, you can for the moment. Go into attachments. I think that would uh, really show uh, what comes with the helmet. If you'd like to. Yeah. So this is the uh, like I said, this is the Secure Fit helmet made by 3M. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers out on the market right now. There's Cask. There's 3M. There's MSA, uh, Aurora, and and a host of other companies out there to provide 
a very similar construction helmet. The big differences with the construction helmets versus the hard hats that I just showed are the uh, suspension systems um, and then the foam, and I don't know if you can really see it inside, um, the six-point uh, attachment for the suspension, but also the foam liner on the inside. And that is one of the big differences, one of the huge differences between a standard hard hat and a construction helmet that doesn't have that liner. Some of them do, the majority of them do not. Um, but that is to help prevent traumatic brain injury from impacts and falls uh, with the hard hat. One of the other major uh, changes, as you can see, is this uh, chin strap or harness system that goes on the wear as well. So one of the big factors that come with uh, traumatic, traumatic brain injury or TBIs in the construction world is when an incident occurs, whether it's a fall uh, from, from elevation or a fall from grade, the hard hat tends to fall off in the fall itself. And that's from the whipping motion of the head, uh, it tends to fly off. Uh, and, and that's one of the main reasons why the suspension and the chin strap itself is so important because it keeps the helmet on the wearer's head that will then help protect them from the actual impact if there is one. Great, thank you for pointing that out to us. Um, the, the one question I had with those helmets is your previous helmet, the, the older the older Pullman helmet uh, or, or mm -hmm. hard hat, I would say, they could change that to where you can wear it backwards, correct? Correct. So, yeah, so they're, it's, it's not widely, uh, accepted, um, and you have to get uh, manufacturer approval to switch the hard hats around. Some of them will allow you to do it, some won't. Uh, but basically what it is, you can't wear it backwards, so I can't put it on my head with the ratchet forward. You know, you see people walking around with their helmets like this, which obviously is not approved. Uh, for the helmet manufacturers, it will allow you to switch the suspension around so you have it facing backwards. Um, you actually have to do that. You have to switch around. And they do even have some manufacturers that have a, a swivel point in the suspension itself here and here where you can switch the ratchet back and forth and wear it forward or backwards. You know, that's very popular in, in uh, operations where you need to have a face shield or a welding shield or something like that. Now, with um, this However, oh, I'm sorry. go ahead. That, that is not an option in the construction helmets. They are designed to be worn, as you can see from the shell, uh, there's, there's an actual ear uh, cut out. It's actually lower in the back than it is in the front. Um, and the design of it, you, you can't wear these things backwards. But there also isn't a brim. So one of the issues with having the helmet switched around was the brim affected the, uh, the welding shields or the other attachments which is one of the reasons why uh, individuals like to switch them around. You know, with the hard hats themselves, with the brim, uh, the brim, it, the intention was if there was to have a glancing blow that that would help deflect whatever might be coming down away from the wearer's face. Um, that is not, and this is a big uh, misconception, that is not a requirement by OSHA standard or ANSI standard for that matter. It's just something that was built in to the hard hat uh, many years ago, and it kind of lives and breathes. Um, and that's something we get a lot of pushback on is when you roll into a new facility or a new client and they look at your hard hats and they say, well, wait a minute, there's no brim on this hard hat or this construction helmet. That doesn't meet OSHA standards, and that's not the case at all. OSHA does not require a brim. However, one of the workarounds we have found, which is typically accepted, as you can see this black uh, attachments that I had the face shield on, that slides down. And for clients or, or customers that really push back, you know, you could take this face shield off and we'll leave. And actually, I could probably take it off real quick uh, without much issue. But they would, we would take these um, face shield attachments off and leave just the, the band itself, as you can see here. Yeah. When you slide that down, it, it becomes a pseudo uh, shield, a brim, and that typically will get buy-in from anyone that might be pushing back saying that the, the new construction helmets don't have a brim. And you can see it does, if, you know, looking from underneath, 
it makes a pretty good seal, no different than on a standard hard hat. And that's and that's a great uh, kind of you know in between bridging the gap between not having a brim, but then you can also throw you know and I know those those face shields are interchangeable because sometimes they get mm-hmm. scratched or whatever, so you do do need to change them, but it does add that brim factor. So that's that's a very good point, and I'm glad that you uh, went through that as well. Right, and and you got to remember also, I mean, with the anti uh, the uh, impact standards, you know, these plastic face shields. They, they have the Z87 plus um, delineation mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're wearing them for impact resistance versus just general protection as a face shield itself. Gotcha. So you need to make sure that you have the right face shield for the application and, and you know, whether you're picking the plus or the standard Very good or point. plus one. Very good point. So how are your workers feeling uh, with, I, I know we talked, uh, kind of touched on that, but how are they feeling with, kind of making the change, having that brim, atta- like all the attachments that come with this. I mean, it looks like you're, you're about to climb a mountain or, or go uh, skiing. Uh, you know, what, what are they feeling out in the field? So typically we don't have the double hearing protection. I just put these on so you could see them in the video today. Uh, you know, when we are chipping or hammering and you need double hearing protection, this is an option. Mm-hmm. Um, but not every employee wears all that on their face shield or um, on their construction helmet itself. Uh, in all reality, if you don't need to have a brim for some reason, some people don't even have these on there. They snap on and all fairly easy. You can just push it with your finger and then the entire attachment, you know, I just popped it right off, oh, wow. okay. as you can see. So, and they just snap right back in. And I know I'm kind of moving around here in the camera, but you can just push them right back in and they're locked in again and ready to go. So, I mean, in all reality, I can take this entire assembly off the helmet in, in less than a minute mm-hmm. and just have my standard hard hat, or, or I'm sorry, standard construction helmet ready to go without all this additional gear on it. Gotcha. So it really depends. It really depends. And that's one of the nice things about these new systems is the interchangeability of, of different components if you need them, whether it's here in protection, face protection, welding protection, um, or just standard use. Yeah, good. Um, now, touching on the, the worker side of it, um, what was the training mm-hmm. implications or what was the training additions uh, that you had, you know, as Pullman had to put in or, or a contractor that's making the change has to put in to make sure that, you know, they, these workers understand where the attachments do, what the helmet does, what it protects them. Uh, what what's some of the additions that you guys had to had to put in? So we we uh, we did it as a company wide rollout uh, back in the winter of last year, and uh, we actually had our executive leadership put together a video, a short video explaining uh, all the things that we kind of talked about. What was the defining factor that made us start moving in this direction? To the benefits of wearing the helmet. Uh, why we're investing in these helmets and why it's important for them to wear them. So we had a a very strong message in video format directly from our executive leadership that that was presented to all of our employees. Uh, We also had a letter written by our president um, that was issued to all of our employees explaining, and I I kind of have it here as a copy of one of it, but it basically explains what the construction hard hat was and where construction helmets are are at today, um, why we're changing them, uh, what is required from the end user to use these things, um, and you know some of the expectations associated with it, and then also the training that was laid out for supervision to be able to transition these things in the field. Good, and and I think that uh, you know whoever watches this, they might be making the change, and I think that those are really good steps uh, to take, you know, getting, getting that, that, uh, you know, statement from higher up saying, this is why mm-hmm. we're, we're changing. And uh, we want to protect you. We want to keep your safety in mind. And I think that that's uh, very important, but also bringing out the, the data, the numbers saying, this is, this is really good. And, and contractors next to you are doing it. Why can't we? Um, so I, I think that uh, that's why we're not seeing safety helmets being rolled out too much, but they're, they're, the change is coming, you know, it, it's already, it's already mid, mid change. <laughs> well, 
you know, unfortunately, the elephant in the room when it comes to the rollout and the switch is the cost. So it is a substantial cost difference from a hard hat to a construction helmet. Mm -hmm. Uh, A hard hat, traditionally, I mean, you can buy some of the very cheap ones, you know, $10 to $20 range. Uh, You know, some of them are a little bit more. I I believe these uh, fiber metal ones, because we buy them in such large quantities, I think we were getting them in the in the mid twenties mm-hmm. uh, at one point. You know, and then you start rolling into uh, construction helmets, and you're talking sixty plus dollars on the low end, and you know can go well over a hundred dollars on, on the higher end models. And I won't name specific names mm-hmm. uh, of different manufacturers, but some of the manufacturers are, are, are you know hundred plus easily all day long uh and then some are some less than that but it's a huge investment especially if you have a large workforce and we rolled out over and just just shy of a thousand new construction helmets last year so you can imagine the the cost factor that goes into that decision Um, but also it, it goes to show you that pullman and pullman's leadership truly believed that that investment in our employee safety was very important that's why we that's why we moved forward with it great good um, besides the cost, you know, are you finding you and, and any other Pullman employees are finding any type of disadvantage uh, next to all the advantages of the attachments and the, and the comfort? Is there any disadvantages you guys are hearing about these? There, there is. Um, there is some concern with when you start putting a lot of uh, attachment on the front of these helmets, the weight of them tends to make them a little unbalanced. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and one of the things, and it was a challenge, and, and I have to commend 3M because they stepped up to the challenge when we brought it to them. But we had, back in late summer, uh, we had some employees putting in uh, what we call SORs, safety observation reports, regarding their helmets and them disengaging, the suspension actually disengaging and falling off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we took that extremely serious, engaged into it right away, and found that there was some concern, and I have the new suspension. This, so this is actually the six point, so there's the one strap that goes across and then the four traditional straps that go in as well. This is the, if you can see, this is the actual suspension inside the construction helmet itself. Uh, and there was a concern that these tabs in the back, if you can see them clearly, mm-hmm. these are multi-adjustable uh, tabs. So. They basically, they turn a quarter turn and you can slide them to the left or right. And that gives you the finite adjustment for the wearer. So it will sit lower on their on their head. It will sit higher on their head. If they have a larger head, they can widen it up. If they have a narrower head, they can. You have a, you have a tremendous amount of adjustability in the suspension to make the end user's comfort and, and wearability you know, very unique to that individual person. Whereas in the standard helmet, there was very little adjustability. There was one band, and basically you had one ratchet to either tighten it up or loosen it up. So you're you're, you're comparing cats and dogs to the suspension systems of the new of the new helmets versus the old hard hats. Yeah. However, back to what I was saying is we had a challenge where these pieces were showing weakness. Uh, and, and I don't know if you can see or not, but see how it has like a gusset system in the in the rails along here. Gotcha. Um, and then and then up here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to come in clear or not. Yeah, I can see um, in, yeah. in in the old system, this was a little more uh, simplified, and it wasn't as rigid. And it, we believe, and and 3M, like I said, stepped up to the plate with this new design. Mm-hmm. Um, we believe that that was one of the reasons why employees were feeling that that unbalanced feeling when they had attachments on it. Um, they they came out, they sent representatives out to all our jobs. They helped to switch these things out. We we basically took all the construction helmets we had and we put all these new suspensions in. And uh, since we made that change, any concerns for uh, stability and or comfort have gone away, from what I understand. Great, and 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 I applaud 3M for taking on the challenge and improving. And also I applaud you guys for listening to your field workers. You know, they obviously had a very important uh, and consistent complaint. Um, and I, I think it's very important that you took that on and, and went to the manufacturer and, and, and said, 
you know, this needs to be changed. But it also shows viewers that this can be, you know, it, it's in its early stages and these helmets can be kind of modified. Um, so we're a little bit away from it being perfect. <laughs> so no, it, it's definitely not perfect there, you know, and unfortunately this is one of the things that took when we talked about the actual rollout and why it took so long from inception to actual rollout is these helmets are not widely accepted as an industry practice. I mean, you see them in the recreational world and hiking and skiing and biking, uh, rock climbing and things of that nature. But as far as construction, where you would, you would obviously, uh, have so many more people wearing that helmet versus recreational, it's not accepted. It's becoming accepted, which will drive cost and will drive value and, and quantities and, and and everything associated with that. Um, it's the market's not there yet. It's not matured from what we understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's things like this with the suspension upgrades after you have a thousand people wearing them and provide you feedback. Uh, that's where you get to make those adjustments and, and make the product that much better. So, you know, between our, our vendor, our, our third-party vendor that helps us buy these, these products, the manufacturer themselves, and then our internal teams, uh, local teams and, and national teams that have all come together to work on this solution, uh, it took a little while, but what a huge improvement once it was done. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to touch on, and, and we talked about training, but also – uh, we would get a lot of workers coming in from companies that had the old style hard hat or they, they mm -hmm. worked with much, such small companies that they didn't even wear hard hats. You know, they were in very small confined areas or they were on residential right. uh, sites that, you know, nothing as residential, but they weren't around a lot of hazards. So when you're onboarding right. these employees, is there anything that you say to them or say, this is our standard, you're working for Pullman? Here's what here's what we got to deal with. Yeah, we we uh, we have a pretty stringent onboarding process for any new employees that come out of the hall that have never worked for us before. And unfortunately, we have we're a pretty busy uh, company, so we have a lot of a lot of employees that stay with us full time year round. Uh, but when we do bring on new employees, whether we're going into a new market or we're, we're going into a new area where they haven't worked for us before. That's part of the onboarding process. Um, we believe in safety 24 seven, which is a cultural program we have here within Pullman. And uh, you know, it's, it's not just, here's your gear, get out there and get the work done. It's, it's come on board, be part of our safety culture, be part of the solution uh, of the problems that we face every day and the hazards that are associated with our work. So you can go home safe every day. And that's, and, and, and that's this hard hat construction, yeah, the construction helmet is is a part of that discussion. And good, and that's and I think that's a good, uh, you know, not just here's the helmet, get to work. Uh, you know, kind of instructing what's going on, and Pullman's, you know, or or the company's kind of safety uh, guidance, saying you know safety is our number one, uh, you know, priority, and we put um, this first. So that's why we're doing this, which I think is important. So you yeah. know. There, there is a global pandemic going on. Everyone knows. Uh, there's no uh, surprises. <laughs> um, right. Are you seeing any kind of uh, gap between, you know, the mask wearing and these helmets, or you know, uh, they might have a different attachment for eye protection? Are you seeing anything uh, with the the updated mask wearing that might aid some of this backlash? They do. They so there is a, uh, and actually I have one in my in my helmet. They do make a uh, an attachable, and it's hard. To, it might be hard to see, but yeah, this yeah, is their right. glasses that actually slide up in. As you can see, they slide up in uh, that will come down, and and they do meet these these particular glasses meet the the ANSI standards for wearing an actual pair of safety glasses versus uh, they make another one. It's it it kind of comes down. It's like a half glass attachment that covers the front of the of the actual helmet itself, but they don't meet the standards because they're too far off the eye. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have these as an option. Um, they help a little bit because they're kind of off your face a little bit further. And you know, when you're wearing a mask and, and it's cold outside or even hot outside, all that additional um, humid air coming out of your mouth fogs the glasses up. Uh, we found that it really wasn't the helmet that needed to be adjusted. It was finding anti-fog glasses 
that really did the trick for us. So we, we uh, have invested in, heavily invested in buying anti-fog glasses for our employees so they could wear their glasses and still wear their masks and, and maintain, you know, compliance with the COVID uh, regulations while working as an essential employee. Great, great. And I hope, uh, you know, all Pullman employees and everyone out there that's staying safe, you know, because we need to wear the mask. Um, but you still sure. want to be protected. You know, hazards are still present. And I think we need to, you know, not think. We, we need to protect them uh, from those so hazards, even if we're during a big global pandemic, you know, it doesn't change anything. So I, I think that- Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very real thing because, you know, you're wearing a mask and your, your glasses are fogging up, which is creating another hazard because now you can't see. And then you have tripping hazards, you have fall hazards, you have, uh, it, you know, when you can't see clearly, that's a big problem. I know it, it, it aids the, the fall aspect, but are you seeing anything with the chin right. straps, you know, uh, in a gap situation? Uh, no, the chin straps are very comfortable. It, it's, you know, no different than the suspension uh, adjusting with it, with them. You have to get them set to, to fit around your head. You know, it's, you know, fortunately we give every employee one of these helmets mm -hmm. and they're theirs to keep. Even after they leave employment with us, we allow them to keep their helmets and, and then hopefully they wear them in the future uh, with other companies they may work with if they can. Um, but it's it's very unique to the individual wearer to get it adjusted so it fits on on their chin, their head properly. You know, you don't want it to be too loose where it's just going to fly off, you know, forward or it's going to come backwards and end up choking you. Mm -hmm. um, and there is, from what we're told from the manufacturer, there is some breakaway uh, strength in in these or calculations in the attachment to the shell because that was a big concern. It's like, hey, this thing isn't going to break away if it gets snug. Are, are snagged, um, you know, I don't want to choke to death. Yeah. So 3M has told us that there is some breakaway uh, functionality in these from the helmet itself, not down low, and like a traditional breakaway. And that's two very good, very good uh, and important points is the breakaway. Um, that would be something mm -hmm. that if I was wearing it every day, I'd, I'd be asking uh, because it's like being in a fall harness, you know, are you going to be able to go sure. or is it going to, is it going to cut off the circulation? And, and second of all, I think that, you know, your company rolling them out and saying, this is yours, take this to your future companies. They see that and they see the protection factor and, and everything that it that it provides. And I think that uh, that's very important to, to getting these to the next step. It's, it's, it's personal, right? You, if you want to change someone's safety culture, you have to make safety personal for them. And how much more personal can you be than protecting your head with a, an upgraded piece of equipment? So in your personal opinion, do you think that these safety helmets are the next norm? Do you think that this is going to be something that will stay? I think it is. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's uh, I don't think it's going to go away uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one, it's it's providing better protection. So how do you argue the fact that you don't want to provide a better protection or better product for your employee? Um, after you get over the hurdle of this is different than what I've worn my entire working uh, career, people tend to realize pretty quickly that they're very comfortable to wear um, and they like them a lot. It provides better uh, comfort for all day. Uh, they are, you know, and, and the manufacturers are working on this data. We've done some of our own internal testing, but they're actually cooler, even though there is an appearance that they're warmer. Uh, the data shows that it is cooler to, to wear them in the heat. Um, and the functionality of them is, is just that much better. So, you know, we talked about the chin straps a minute ago with the standard hard hat, you know, because we work at elevations quite a bit in our, in our operations. We would always have people wear tethers that would go from the suspension of their hard hat and then they would have to attach their clothing somehow which is always a pain because now you're taking it on and off every time you take your your uh, your head protection off. Mm -hmm. With the chin strap, it's integrated. It's it's not even a thought. It's just it's a hurdle to get over. Hey, I need to put the chin strap on. But just like anything else, once you do it a few times, it just becomes part of your norm. Good, good, and uh, I think it's important. Um, you know, because I think it, these these helmets cover a lot of safety bases um, that regular mm -hmm. hard hats are aren't. You know, so I think that's good. Um, 
Do you have any other pointers for any, you know, management that isn't buying in or safety professionals that are in our position uh, meeting with them and, and saying, you know, I know you touched on it before, but is there any um, pointers that you can give to these, these companies that could get them over that last obstacle? Yeah, there, there's a couple things. One, um, the cost is the cost, right? It, and it's no different than buying a cheap tool versus buying a better tool. We've done these analysis, you know, in the past as well. The cheaper tool might be cheap in the beginning, but wear and tear and breakdown and production production rates typically are less with the cheaper tool versus the better tool. It's no different than your safety equipment. When you buy better safety equipment, you get better results from that safety equipment, whether it's end user uh, wanting to wear it uh, because it is comfortable uh, or the results of the protection that it actually provides your employee. You know, a traumatic brain injury, if you were ever to have to endure one of those as an employer, is a very expense, uh, expensive uh, instance to have. So, mm-hmm. you know, investing in equipment that could possibly prevent that is is very much worth it. So I would highly recommend to, to consider that. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, when, you know, before we did this call, I was trying to do a little research myself just to see where the data was. And, have, and a lot of it is, you know, oh, here's where the, the helmets are available. You can get colors, you can get attachments. It's more of a selling mm-hmm. point. But I, I pushed the, the man, you know, the, the safety professionals and, and, and uh, people in, in that position out there. There is the research. The data is out there and there's more data coming. And I think um, people need to look out for that and then make that decision, put that together and make the change. Because you guys have done it, which I congratulate you guys. <laughs> Pullman uh, to make that that change for how many uh, people work at Pullman and and they made the change you know you guys made the change to you mm-hmm. know that's a huge obstacle to overcome um, so I, I it is you with, with that and and it really like I said it comes down to cost and I think you know the the people that are on the fence need to ask themselves would I do this if the cost wasn't a factor right so if this helmet costs the same amount of money as a hard hat would I make the switch? And if the answer is yes, you know what you should be doing. You have to figure out a way to afford that cost. Yeah. Um, if you wouldn't make that switch and it was the same cost, then that's a different conversation you need to have internally with your teams. Um, I can tell you our people have been widely accepting. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of pushback. Uh, and, and then the other piece of advice that I would give is listen to your people. Mm-hmm. So, listen to what they have to say. If we ignored the fact that people were raising concern with the suspension and let it go, it would have been catastrophic for the program because eventually it just would have you know, disintegrated in on itself. The fact that we listened to our people, engaged them for potential solutions, made the program that much stronger. So yeah, and that's good. And that would I, be my uh, other piece of advice. Yeah. And that's, and th- those are great pointers. And I, I think a lot of people are maybe just on the fence, you know, maybe they, can't get past that last obstacle um, or they they're in their pre stages and they just haven't um, even wanted to make the change. Um, but I think the bigger sure. question is to, to management is, would you put your kid in these? Would you put your son or daughter and then put them out into the field where a lot of hazards are, you know, is it going to protect them? Right. Yeah. We have the data and it shows. So uh, at this time, uh, you know, Steve, I thank you for, for coming on and, and uh, walking us through, um, how your company did, you know, took the transition, listened to the workers, and uh, and really brought the safety home, you know, hit it home. Um, so I, I thank you for coming on. I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it, and hopefully, uh, more people will listen to this and and make the decision to move forward with uh, switching their hard hats to construction elements. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and I and. And uh, this has been a great discussion. There's a lot of things I've learned, and I hope a lot of uh, people out there learned as well. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna close it out here. Um, you know, please stay safe out there. You know, with the pandemic and and the safety hazards that are present. Um, but please stay safe. And and there's you know more materials coming out from the Labor's Health and Safety Fund uh, of North America in the future. Thank you. Thank you.